we are finally done with defining the automaton op psi associated to formula psi. Let's see an example in the case where we have only one atom A and taking psi to be eventually A. In which case, the closure of psi consists of A, not A, eventually A, and not eventually A. Remember, the, clo the closure consists of all subformulas of psi and their negations. Now, the associated automaton has the following components. Its alphabet is the power set of the set of atoms. So here, it consists of the empty set and the singleton set containing the atom A. The set of states Q consists of all elementary subsets of the closure, where elementary means propositionally and temporally consistent, and also complete. In our case, we have three states, one containing A and eventually A, one containing not A and eventually A, and one containing not A and not eventually A. Remember that these correspond to the possible scenarios for deciding the truth and falsity of the subformulas of our given formula. For example, A together with not eventually A is not in the set of states, because it would not be possible uh, as a scenario. Now, the initial states of our automaton, the elements of the set I, are those scenarios that contain our formula Psi, here eventually A. So there are only two of them. As for the set calligraphic F of accepting sets of our automaton, it contains one fulfillment set of states for each formula in the closure of Psi that is an eventually, an always, or an until. So here we have only one accepting set, fulfill of eventually A. Now let's see how fulfill of eventually A looks like. Remember that it consists of all those scenarios K that contain A if they contain eventually A. That is, do not contain eventually A without containing A. And this is true for two of the scenarios in Q that consisting of A and eventually A, and that consisting of not A and not eventually A. OK, this means that calligraphic F is the set shown here, which is a set of sets of states. And since for our automaton, a state is a set of formulas, we have that calligraphic F is a set of sets of sets of formulas. So again, note that sigma is a set of sets of atoms. Q, I, um, and fulfill of eventually A are sets of sets of formulas. And therefore, calligraphic F is a set of sets of sets of formulas. It remains to see how the transition relation looks like in our example. Here it is. It connects states via edges labeled with letters. And again, remember that a state is a scenario, that is a set of formulas, while a letter is a set of atoms. So let's recall the conditions defining our automaton's transition relation. There are two types of condition. First, uh, we require that when K transits somewhere through some set of atoms, say capital A, then this set of atoms should consist of all the atoms in K. So capital A consists of all the atoms in K. This means that showing capital A is actually redundant, since it is completely determined by the source K of the transition. For example, we can see on the picture that all transitions coming out of the state consisting of A and eventually A are labeled with a singleton A set. So we have three transitions, this, this, and this, and all of them are labeled with a singleton A set. This is because the state contains exactly one atom, namely A. Also, all transitions coming out of the not A and eventually A state, a state with no atoms in it, 
will be labeled with empty sets. So all transitions coming out of this state, this one and this one, are labeled with the empty set. And similarly, for transitions coming out of the not A and not eventually A state, there's only one transition coming out of it, um, and it is labeled with empty set because the state has no atoms. And the second type of conditions defining a transition from some k, some state k to some state k prime regulates the next state behavior of the temporal connectives. Here we have only the eventually connective. So the condition is that eventually A is in K if and only if A is in K or eventually A is in K prime. In particular, this condition means that there exists a transition from the state A and eventually A to itself. Essentially because eventually A exists in the source and persists in the target state. So the required condition is true. Also, it means that there is a transition between the state A, eventually A, to the state um, not A, eventually A. So I have a transition between these two states. Again, because eventually A is in both the source and the target state. So the condition is true. But our condition also means that there is no transition between the not A, not eventually A state and the not A and eventually A state. So we don't have such a transition. This is because eventually A is in the target state, but not in the source state. So we can see that the required condition is not satisfied in this case. We don't have a transition here, therefore. So we have justified the transition relation in this example, looking at the formal definition of this relation for the automaton. It is a good idea to, to also have an informal look at these transitions and try to make sense of them using our scenario intuition based on the expected behavior of the eventually connective. Say we are here in a scenario where A and eventually A are both true. What can happen next? Well, at the next state, A may become false. And also, both A and not A may become false. These types of evolutions to the next state are both consistent. So we have transitions from our A and eventually A state to both these other states. But say we are here in a scenario where both A and eventually A are false. From here, we really cannot transit to any scenario where A or eventually A will be true, since this would contradict the current scenario, which assumes that eventually A is false, meaning A will never be true. So in this scenario, we are doomed, so to speak, to, to stay in uh, with both A and eventually A forever, for, forever false, meaning that this state only transits to itself. Now, let's say that we are here in a scenario where A is false and eventually A is true. This means that A is not yet true, but will be true. So it is perfectly fine to move to a next scenario, such as this one, where A is true, thus fulfilling the promise of eventually A. And from here, from this situation, we can move to a scenario where eventually A has stopped being true. Since there's no contradiction here, we fulfilled, we initially fulfilled our previous, our previous promise. When we were here, we said that 
A will be eventually true. And by transiting here, we fulfill this promise. So A has become true. And after that, we can get into a situation where um, A will be forever false. This is no, no, no problem. So we have these transitions from here to here and from here to here. These transitions are okay. But what we can't do is transit directly from here to here. This is not a valid transition. A scenario where A is not true uh, we, we cannot transit from a scenario where A is not true, but eventually A is, directly to a scenario where suddenly, eventually A has stopped being true. We would be in an inconsistent situation where a promise, in this case, that A will be eventually true, cannot be fulfilled. Now, let's bring in the initial states and the accepting states of this Buki automaton into the discussion. And let's clean up things a, a, a little bit by writing Q0, Q1, and Q2 for its states. What is the generated language of this automaton, out of eventually A? Well, to accept words, we are allowed to start in either Q0 or Q1. And what we must do is make sure that our run visits either Q0 or Q2 infinitely often. This is what I and calligraphic F tell us. In other words, we should never settle to stay in Q1 during a run. It is easy to see that the accepted words are exactly those that have at least one singleton A set among its letters, meaning that they do not consist of empty sets only. And note that this is exactly the condition that the atom set trace of a presumptive sequence of states pi must fulfill in order to satisfy eventually A. Indeed, a sequence satisfying eventually A is precisely one that will have the atom A in the labeling of some state at some point. And this is what we're going to prove not only for this automaton associated to eventually A, but in general for the automaton associated to any formula psi. We're going to show this relationship between the sequences that satisfy a formula and the words that the associated automaton accepts. 